joining me on this video today where we are going to talk about where two secants intersect outside of the circle, a secant and a tangent intersecting outside of a circle, and when two tangents intersect outside of a circle. And we're going to be finding the angle measure of that intersection that's outside of it. So uh, let's take a look together. I think you're going to see a lot of very similar situations happening from each one. Even though they look different, you're really kind of doing almost the exact same thing. So let's take a look. If I wanted to find the measure of angle A, so two secants intersecting the exterior of a circle, um, here was what I need, would need to do. I would need to do one half times the, sum, uh, the difference rather of these two arcs. Now, these two arcs don't just come out of nowhere. So let's take a look. You see angle A? Angle A intercepts the circle creating these two arcs. Arc BC, which would be the inner arc, and I'm calling it the inner arc because it's closer to angle A. And then this is the outer arc, it's further away. You simply do one half of the outer arc minus the inner arc. So the measure of angle A is equal to one half of D arc DE minus whatever arc BC is. That's when you have two secants. Now if I have a secant and a tangent, they intersect out here, I've got angle A. It's basically the exact same thing. It's taking one half times the difference of arc BED, so the outer arc, minus arc BC, the inner arc. So it's always one half times the outer arc minus the inner arc. If I have two tangents intersecting on the outside of a circle to find angle A, it would be the outer arc, so the one half times the measure of angle uh, arc BEC minus the measure of arc BC. So again, outer arc minus the inner arc. So for each one of these, to find that angle on the outside, it's the outer arc minus the inner arc, and then you take one half of that value and you have your answer. So let's take a look at these first two. Um, if I wanted to find the measure of angle A, it would be the measure of angle A is equal to 1 half times the outer arc of 90 minus the inner arc of 30, which becomes simply 30 degrees. That's it. 90 minus 30 is 60. Half of 60 is 30. Over here now, if I wanted to find X, now X isn't that outer angle. We already know the outer angle. So we just have to make sure we put our numbers in the right spots. So 30 is equal to 1 half of 105 minus x. Think about that. The measure of angle A, which is 30, is equal to 1 half times the outer arc minus the inner arc. Just like we did here where we were solving for that angle, but here we're actually given the angle and we want to solve for an arc. Now at this point, when you plug those values in, you could distribute 1 half or I like to clear my fractions instead. I'd rather multiply both sides by two. And if I do that, I get 60 equals 105 minus X. Let's subtract 105 on both sides. Let's divide both sides by negative one and we get X equals 45. And I could test it. I could do 105 minus 45, which is 60. Half of 60 is 30. It works out perfectly. Let's take a look at the next two where we have a secant and a tangent but it basically follows the exact same formula. So in order to find the measure of angle A, I'd have to do the outer arc minus the inner arc. Now notice I'm not given the outer arc. I am told this arc is 40 and this entire arc is 110. And since all of the arcs around a circle add up to 360, 40 plus 110 is 150, 360 minus 150 is 210. So the measure of angle A is 1 half of 210 minus 40, the outer arc minus the inner arc. 210 uh, minus 40 is 170, half of 170 is 85. Let's go ahead and find the measure of this outer arc here if we're told that the exterior angle is 60, the inner arc is 80. So the measure of angle A is equal to 1 half times x minus 80. We know the measure of angle A is 60. So 60 is equal to 1 half of x minus 80. Multiply both sides by 2. So we get 120 equals x minus 80. Add 80, and we get 200. So that arc is 200, and it completely checks out. 200 minus 80 is 120. Half of 120 is that 60. All right, bottom two, two tangents. So same thing. That angle A is equal to 
1 half times the outer arc minus the inner arc. Here I'm told just my inner arc. So if I know just the inner arc for a tangent, we know this outer arc because the inner arc and the outer arc are going to add up to 360 when you have two tangents. So if this is 120, then this outer arc is um, 360 minus 120, which is 240. Okay, so if we want to find the measure of angle A, this outer angle here, and we have just this arc of 120. Now think about it. If I know that BC is 120, and I've got this entire arc BDC here, and the arcs all together should add up to 360, if this is 120, then this greater arc here, that major arc, 360 minus 120 is 240. So the measure of angle A is equal to 1 half times 240 minus that 120, which... Half of 120 gives me 60. Now, for this last one, if I want to find x, now here, I know if this is 120, then this has to be 240. But in this case, if I want to find x, what I really need to know is that this little arc here would be 360 minus x. Um, again, I don't know exactly what this value is. I don't know what any of the arcs are. But if I say to find x, then this segment, this little arc here is 360 minus x. So 70 would be equal to 1 half of the outer arc x minus the inner arc of 360 minus x. And now, so look what's happening here. I'm taking x and I'm subtracting it by this expression of 360 minus x. So when I do that, this ends up becoming x minus 360 plus x because if I distribute that negative or minus sign, that's what it becomes. If I continue to simplify, x plus x is 2x. I can go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. And I'm basically just solving for x now. Add 360, divide by 2, and x is equal to 250. And it works out because if this is 250, 360 minus 250 is 110. 250 minus 110 is 140, and half of 140 is 70. So it completely checks out. Thank you so much for watching my video. I, was, I hope it was helpful for you. Bye.